Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. What's going on? It's your girl Tiffany Oleka, the Nigerian based in Ghana YouTuber. And from the title of this video, I'm sure you guys are so so excited. This is another interview. It has been so long since we did an interview, and I'm happy to today on my hot seat. I have my very 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 good friend. Why did you make this happen like earlier on? Like, why is it just happening now? Uh, Charlie, you know. Shame on you because this was one of the pioneers of my YouTube channel back then when we started. Oh, okay. I like, that's very true. Very, exactly, very, very you true. see. But anyway, this is Fem, my very good friend. So I'm going to give him the floor and allow him to introduce himself properly to you guys. So Femi, carry on. Uh, just as Tiffany said, I'm Entry Femi Banabas, a Nigerian born Ghanaian, uh, first of four children, an IT maintenance officer. Yeah. That's basically so welcome Femi, welcome, welcome. So I need to introduce yourself just on campus. Can you tell us a bit about yourself? Just like in a sentence. Like a bit about it, like something fun about you before we get into the serious matter. Uh, just lighten the mood. Oh uh, okay. Well <laughs> I'm as I said, I'm your average sound mm -hmm. engineer guy. Mm -hmm. Um basically that's it. This guy does it. That's so it. you grew up in Nigeria, right? So yes. tell us what was what that was like you, you mentioned earlier on like Ghanaian, Nigerian, Nigerian, Ghanaian what's that all about like please explain to our viewers okay I was born in Nigeria mm -hmm. I literally grew up there spent my first 17 years there so when I came here in 2010 wow. yeah so your parents who is a Nigerian who is a Ghanaian okay, my mom is a Nigerian oh. my dad so he found Nigerian love and relocated back to Nigeria. Mm. Hey! See, Nigerian girls, you can make a new hey. man so <laughs> Wow. So, your dad being Ghanaian and your mom being Nigerian, at that time in Nigeria, what was that like for you? Like, were you a bit confused? Because I would have been confused. Like, my dad is Nigerian, mom is Ghanaian. It's just like, you know. Was it strange for you? How did you cope? Like, I don't know. It was it was really crazy to be honest. It was really crazy. Um, you know, at one spectrum I found myself as a Nigerian, the other spectrum a Ghanaian. Growing up in school, <laughs> I was usually being tested because of my Ghanaian okay. everything. It was it was really crazy. Do you have like a, obviously do you have like a Ghanaian small accent because of maybe your dad? I've always had a Nigerian accent. <laughs> the okay. Ghanaian accent came in like <laughs> Oh my god. So why did you move back to Ghana? Why did you move to Ghana? I mean, because you grew up in Nigeria, so this was like your first time coming to Ghana. Yes. What was that like and why did you decide? Why did your parents decide after 17 years? Okay, my my daddy wanted us to have a feel of where he actually came. Because in one way or the other it was like we were alienated from our Ghanaian <laughs> so he wanted me to he wanted me to have a feel of where he came from and also wanted me to continue my teacher education here. In Ghana. So that's why I came here. Wow. So where in Ghana did you move to? Okay, I arrived in Accra uh -huh. ten years ago. Labadi precisely. Hey, you understand Labadi, Labadi boy. <laughs> <laughs> wow, okay. So describe your first experience when you landed in Ghana. Wait, with parents moving to Ghana, did you know, did, was your dad speaking like Ghanaian language? To Unfortunately, you? my dad never spoke Ghanaian language to us, so wow. I, I don't even understand my native language. Hey. Native language. But like, you speak your own because of the mom, and obviously growing up in Nigeria. Very friends. Very hey, wow. Well, <laughs> so how was your experience here? Okay. Trying to fit in and all that. So when I came here, it was a whole new environment. I realized um, Ghanaians, especially where, where I found myself, they predominantly communicate in their native language. If you are the English kind of person, you really get bored, <laughs> which is where I came from. And um, it wasn't easy, it wasn't easy. People actually looked down on me at some point because of my Nigerian heritage, but as time went on, I was able to fit in and okay. into the whole thing. So. Oh, wow, wow, wow. So comparing uh, the expenses of living in Ghana and Nigeria, what is there some kind of balance? Like, what would you have to say about that? Ghana is expensive for my people. Ghana is very, very, very expensive. It's much more affordable to live in Nigeria. <laughs> 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 Are you guys hearing that? 
Dad was with her. I was alone and I left. So when did Dad leave? Dad just came here for one or two things. He was actually going back for his son. Anyways, well, anyways, let's 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 be <laughs> happy and everything. Yeah. So okay, moving forward, uh, Femi and I met in school. So I want to know his experience schooling in Ghana because we went, we went to the same university. So Femi, how was your experience schooling in Ghana? Okay, so far I've attended two tertiary institutions in Ghana here. Okay. I did my HND in Accra Polytechnic and okay. I did my degree with Tiffany at AIT. So, <laughs> schooling, my first school per se, I was, I faced discrimination at Accra Poly. Really? Crazy amount of discrimination. Oh. And, you know, a Nigerian in Ghana does not having too much. Mm -hmm cash like that it was it was really difficult for me i had i had lecturers looking down mm -hmm. on me i was embarrassed in class because of and whenever i speak with the nigerian accent back then like some of the colleagues make mockery wow. of me i was in Accra poly wow. but when i attended the it it was really good it was a good experience yeah because it's in nigeria that's <laughs> it was a very good experience there it was it was that's very very <laughs> wow, so uh, so aside from that, you know, so people were not so welcoming, but in oh. general, do you, you're a Ghan you have Ghanaian and half Nigerian, who are more likely to be more homely? Yes. That's, 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 that's a tough one, I would, uh, Ghanaians are generally cool, they are generally cool, if not, uh, Language barrier. I think the language barrier. Language barrier is a problem, but Ghanaians are really, really cool. Yeah. And that's taking nothing from Nigerians, by the way. Nigerians are so cool. Very cool. <laughs> wow. So 2020 as a whole has been kind of rough. You know, you mentioned um, you work here. How has that taken a toll on you? You know, being in Ghana, like, how do you feel that 2020 has affected? Your lifestyle, work, everything about you basically. How the 2020 affected you? 2020. I don't want to mention that thing because that thing is like um, YouTube doesn't like us mentioning that thing. Oh, okay. Yes, so okay. we just work with 2020. 2020 has, yeah. has been tough as we all know. Mm -hmm. We faced a couple of a lot of stuff and it has affected work. Some of my colleagues have lost their jobs. Even my job is only shaky at the moment, and um, twenty years it has given us a new perspective to life, to how we see things. We've lost close ones, and I don't know. Twenty twenty has really been an 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 odd year, a very odd one. Very odd one. Very odd one. Wow. So um, I I think I skipped a question. For you, you know, we, we, we did start with how growing up was like in Nigeria. I want you to um, get deeper with me because now we speak, we've sp spoken about um, Ghana or everything. You know, I really want to know what it was like. Do Nigerians discriminate? Absolutely not. So, how was it like for you? Like, when people ask you, are you from, like, I'm from Ghana, I'm from Nigeria? I had a a teacher in primary school that was from Ghana and I thought he was really from really from Ghana because Ghana was this cool place to be. So like were you like a kingpin in your class or mm, no but I think my Nigerian my Nigerian mates back then in Nigeria they really loved the fact that a Ghanaian was a Germanist. They love really it. loved it. It's, it's amazing <laughs> like and then that my teacher was a, a superstar like, <laughs> hey Mr. Otsu alright peace oh, <laughs> sir he was really good at <laughs> Anyway, so uh what would you where would you have rather gone to besides coming to Ghana if you had a choice? If I had a choice. To move somewhere other than coming to Ghana to know your roots. 
Oh, if I make another day, I will have a good job. Hey, Charlie! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Canada would have been a very good choice. Good choice. Yep. Oh wow. So you've been in Ghana now since 2010? Exactly. 10 years. So yes. how many places in Ghana have you visited so far? I've been to... I've been to um, Greater Accra region, the Eastern region, mm -hmm. the Ashanti region, Western North region. I basically covered those places because I did a particular project mm -hmm. and that project afforded me the opportunity to travel mm -hmm. to other parts of Ghana. Wow. Yeah, so. Oh, nice. So, how many Ghanaian languages do you speak? I speak one Ghanaian language. Which one? Ghan. Do you speak three? Not from Kaka. Chi, Kaka I just I understand the bits. I can't speak it. But at least you can go to the market. You can go places that relate to people, and they won't really know that you don't really know how to speak. I will, I, will, I think I can find my way through. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. So you say you speak Gan. I so speak Gan. people that are Gan, there, I'm going to give him a sentence to say, and let's see if he gets his friends. Yeah, so yeah, you're well. going to say, my name is Femi. Uh, I love Nigerian jollof. <laughs> and I left, I, I moved to Ghana when I was 17 years old. One, two, three, go. Okay. I chose me, Femi. Me, Sumo, Nigeria, Umo, Jolo, Fe. In Bagana, 2010. Hey! Wow, 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 wow. So who taught you that? Actually, I learned it. Where I, where I stay, if you don't speak Ghan, <laughs> Ghan will speak you. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good so one. So I had to learn the language. I had to learn. I listened and I was able to pick one or two things. Oh, then you just, she just had language so I was able to like grow on you and just start like speaking fluently. I, I really hope I, I do learn some. I, 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 I not, and again, going to school like AIT, most of the people in AIT is a food no one to speak to. Not at all. Most of them don't know how to speak to you, nothing, nothing. Like, you <laughs> just find yourself with people that don't really know how to speak that, you know. So, um, Femi, you know, people right now, a lot has been happening in Nigeria, you know. Like, uh, at the end of the day, even though your mom is a Nigerian, it still makes you a Nigerian. That's very you know? true. That's very you know, true. Some people say, well, you have to take your dad's side, but still, like, you have family back home. So, do you have any word of encouragement for anybody that has been affected in one way or the other? By the recent unrest that happened in Nigeria, what's any words of encouragement you have for them? Okay, uh, yeah. first of all, that was a very tough one. I would encourage them to keep moving, keep going. It gets better at the end of the day. Although sure. uh, we might find ourselves in a bit of a very bad row, you mm -hmm. should just look, look up and know that better days are coming. It might, it might sound cliche, but yeah, better days are definitely coming. coming. So I need I know I'm, I you might have a lot of mentors and so but I need just two people that motivate you and why. Okay. Um the first is my dad. My dad really motivates me a lot because <laughs> my dad has really had has had a really tough time and mm -hmm. the way he navigates sure. in these tough situations yeah. it's really really inspiring. So my dad is really one person that actually serves as a mentor. Mentor, sorry. <laughs> hey, Ghanaian accents, please. Um, <laughs> there's this um, um, pastor friend of mine, it's called Pastor, pastor Rachel. Okay. I met him in church. He inspires me. He's a Ghanaian. He's a Ghanaian. Yes. Nice. He inspires me a lot. When, when I was in a bit of a dirty, dirty situation, a damn situation, he was able to advised me mm -hmm. and they even came to my aid mm. a number of times that man really inspired me he's a strong man himself he has faced a lot of uh, how do i put it uh, a lot of things have been said about him yeah. but he never let it get yes. into him he has a tough skin and i really pick a lot from him yeah that thing is very important you need to always have you need to be strong in anything you do so um so to anyone that is planning on moving to Ghana, I know as for everything that's happening, people want to move to Ghana. That's very People want to come to here for school, you know. I was someone that was confused when I was coming to Ghana for school. Okay. And I didn't have anybody to advise me. And people look at videos like this online, like trying to know oh, what life is like in Ghana. So what advice would you give 
you see you moved to when you were 17 what advice would you give maybe your 17 year old self and someone that's probably a teenager trying to come here from school what advice would you give yeah i would, I would just advise the person if the person really wants to come here the person to try and make the effort to come ghana is a very good place to be um, with determination and serious hard work mm -hmm. you would find this place a wonderful place to stay. The education system is very, 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 very good. Um, jobs, if if you are really good and um, you are able to um, work your way, you will get something good doing and start life properly. Yeah. True, true. So you know, um, there's a popular stereotype that Nigerians are bad. Nigerians come to Ghana to come and corrupt everybody. Mm. You know, we have this. Bad. There's this bad image about majority of them and Nigerians, sure. girls and guys. So what would you like to say? Because you mentioned something of your mates teasing you in Accra Poli for your accent. Yeah. But as of then, what is happening now was not as rampant as it is now. Yes. So how, right now, people hear your name Femi. You sound like a Nigerian. Okay. <laughs> and look at you and ah, this one is. So how, what you what you feel, what you have to say about that? Have you been... Have you found yourself in a situation like that? Couple police of police harassment. Um, so, fortunately for me, <laughs> police haven't come my way yet. Oh, thank you. My my mind just has to do with um, the civilians, yeah. people in general. Okay, when you say you are, just when they hear the name Femi, they know that like, yes, you are from Nigeria. <laughs> and they start asking you, is it true you guys eat human beings? Ish. I'm telling you. Okay. Is, is, is it true you guys eat people? Uh, why do you guys like fraud? Why do you guys do this? And that? You see, uh -huh. at first when I got here, those things really entered me, and I was usually quick to uh -huh. to react. But as time goes on, I realize this is not um, the general view of the Ghanaians. Not every Ghanaians see Nigerians sure this way. Yeah. A couple of people, but at the end of the day, you don't let these things get to you. Get to you. Sure. And over time, they will get to know that, Charlie. I'm a good guy. I'm a good person, and Nigeria sure. has actually produced very, very wonderful people. True, true, yep. true. Nigerians, we are, we are actually, you know, so we, we, are, we are cool people, you know. Very cool, very cool. Lots of people. Things happen because even when we went to school, then we used to see our female mates, like, you know, doing. Mm -hmm. hmm. Can't comment. See, we have seen things. We have. This was not when you're eating. So, ah. so when you see things like that, you just mm -hmm. say, ah, this Nigerian girl, they come to here to do to do this. prostitution, come here to do all these kind of things, and you feel like, you know, even you as a Nigerian, sometimes you, sometimes I get very insecure of my fellow Nigerian because I'm like, this person for real, but that. this person fake because you can't really tell what this person is going to do to you because of how the Ghanaian, like the mentality you too, sometimes I find myself being affected by that mentality it's very like, true, it's very true ah, is this person, what if this person is like this like that, you know, you start questioning yourself and you're like, oh no, let me just give this benefit of doubt hmm. it's, when giving someone the benefit of doubt is hard this it's day, hard. Like, this day is hard like, I just say Jesus take the whole you know <laughs> 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 yeah. so get into somewhere fun, fun, fun Femi hello, Femi <laughs> Oluwa <laughs> Femi. Hey, talk to me. Talk to me. Talk to me. Talk to mm. me. Mm. Oh yeah. Between Nigerian Atikania Jolof. Which one is Oh, Nigerian Jolof. Nigerian Jolof. Can we end this in that video? It's over. It's, it's over. It's over. Like, it's over. It's over. It's over. It's over. It's over. <laughs> Hey. You won't get it anywhere, I'm telling Never. you. You won't get it Never. anywhere. And to one of my colleagues watching this video now, that's always telling me that Nigerian food is work, whatever. See, it depends on the person that cooks. Thank you very I've much. I've tasted sweet Ghanaian jollof, I've tasted horrible Ghanaian jollof. This is a nice Nigerian jollof, this is a bad Nigerian jollof. Mm -hmm. Does mm -hmm. it matter? Like, it doesn't stop anything. So, Charlie, I beg, I beg. So, speaking of food still, mm -hmm. what Nigerian dishes do you know how to cook for? Can you even cook? I can't can cook. cook. Yes, sir. Hi. I can't. I can't. I can't Femi, cook I'm friendly. Uh, friendly the basic <laughs> ones, the normal one, rice. The jollof yeah. is even talking about. I'm I can't. Sure jollof. I have not been in the kitchen. To be honest. <laughs> but rice, hey. uh, normal stuff. <laughs> you can cook it. Yeah, but actually, when we are going deep there, I, I, I need to talk. Oh. 
So okay, so this is basically the end of the interview, but I want to like lighten everybody's mood, like tell you how Femi and I met in Ghana. <laughs> right. We were fighting. You know? <laughs> it was fight. Mm. We took a class together um, in TEAB. Yeah, TEAB. Yeah, yeah. I think I was the course rep. You were the course rep. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. So, I was doing my course rep duty. Uncle sent me a message and said it's not coming to class. That she marks me for attendance. I said, I do no such thing. <laughs> he said, Why? Like, why is this one taking it serious? Like, my high school. Mm. So, from one fight to the other, before I did, I was like, You know, I said, talking. Talking, talking. And that was it. A miserable friendship. Charlie. From it's just how you know. Mm. I'm telling you from fight to. <laughs> Anyways, guys, it's been real. Femi, thank you so much for coming all the way here and telling us about your journey, your transit rather from Nigeria to Ghana. And obviously, by this time next year, it's somewhere greater. Like, we can only wish the best for ourselves, you know, make Africa great again. You yeah. know, people should come to Ghana, invest in Ghana. Ghana is good for this. It's, it's right, right. Ghana, Ghana as 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 much as sometimes it gets annoying. This place, if you make it here, because in as much even money per se, if you can have like how much this, you want to take back to Nigeria, it's high. Big. It's big money. So if you can make money here and take it back to Nigeria, it's good. This place, I mean, dollar rate and this rate, they are not even too far away from each other. So you guys should actually think of coming to Ghana. Family. It's been real. So in a nutshell, your ten years in, in Ghana, just in one one word, how's it been? Fun. Fun. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Femi, I'll like you close this video. You know what? You know how I do. if you don't know how I close the video, it means you don't watch my YouTube videos. We are I, close. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, viewers. Thank you for having me around and to me, thank you for it's been, it's been a pleasure and we'll see you on the flip side. You're supposed to tell them to not forget to like, share. Yeah, please subscribe on Tiffany's channel. Speak mm. guns, speak to everything. I mean, you're, you're fine. I mean, why you're fine. No more fear, more subscribe to Tiffany's channel. You're not going to be fine. You're 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 going to Subscribe to see and the notification always make sure the notification comes straight to that screen of yours. She's a wonderful person. Thank you. Bye.